of our talks that we've had previously on whether or not we should embrace biotech and, and, and its potential. And, and now we are looking at a more interesting and really intriguing conversation on what was the fate of biotech research of an application in the face of this really unfavorable uh, regulatory environment. And with us are uh, really very resourceful people. I want to take uh, uh, this chance to welcome Dr. Eliodat Mwesege, uh, former minister and honorable member of parliament for Shema. Uh, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us, uh, doctor. I want to welcome Dr. I want to welcome Dr. Jimmy and, 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 and Dr. Asa Makara. So really, let, let's get started, fast forward. Where is, uh, of course we can't have a conversation about the, the, the fate of biotech in Uganda and research development and application without speaking about the big elephant, the Genetic Engineering and Regulatory Act. Where is it right now? And I, I want to begin with Dr. Yodet Mwesi. In 2017-18, we all had a real optimism that now the bill in Parliament had had a second, second chance of you know being uh, coming to life again after the first election by the president, and and it got back to, to Parliament, and by then you were Minister of the Science, Technology, and Innovation. Where is the bill right now? What should we think about? It? Is it in good hands? Where is it? You're welcome, uh, Mr. Yen. Uh, thanks a lot, Jonan. And I must say uh, that I will be leaving shortly as I informed Perez earlier on uh, last week, but I only have a few minutes. Uh, but uh, so briefly, uh, let me just say, in answering your question, just mention a few more points. First of all, of course, thank you for organizing this event and thinking about some of us uh, to participate in this event. And uh, I must say also, uh, thank the students uh, who chose by technology as a course. And I want to say that, uh, you know, by technology is here to stay, you know, without the law. I must also say that Biotechnology is more than GMO, it's more than that's just genetic engineering. Actually, Maxwell, who is on the call, knows very well we have been saying that biotechnology is as catalytic as oil to Uganda and as revolutionary as ICT. That's the way we describe biotechnology. And of course, now when you see that Uganda with a population of about to about 46 million or thereabout. Very soon we shall be 63 million, and 2050 we shall be 105.7 million. East Africa now 180 million will be 442 million by, two, by 2050. Uh, Africa, we have about 1.3 billion, we are almost the same as India. But by 2050 we shall overtake India, we shall be 2.5 billion. And indeed, for every four people on this planet, one will be an African. And by, 20, by 2100, most of the people actually will be Africans, really. So when you look at this population barge, and then you also look at climate change and unpredictable weather, then you know that by technology, that we have to use biotechnology tools for purposes of Harris to ensure we can provide medication and the Harris for all these people, food, be able to have food for all these people, uh, industry, environment. So there's just no way that we can do without, without biotech. We have to, to have biotech, even as the as has said. And then, of course, with respect to the uncertain, first of all, uncertain regulatory climate, I must say, now there is no law that bans anybody from participating by technology. Maxwell or Barbara can be able to add on more. There is absolutely no law. The other day I was seeing GM Hong in some of our supermarkets. So there is nothing, uh, although it's understand, but there is nothing that stops anybody 
from uh, participating in that. Of course, we have the Katahena protocol that we, we have got for but the local the law. Students. So b- back to the bill, as uh, John have said, this bill was actually introduced in Parliament in 2012, long before I even became Minister of Government. That time it was called the National Biotechnology and Biosafety Bill, 2012. And this was after Cabinet had adopted the National Biotechnology and Biosafety Policy in 2008. And therefore, this bill was supposed to operationalize the National Biotechnology and Biosafety Bill by policy of 2008. So it was tapered in 2012, and uh, of course, was not was committed to the committee, but was not passed. It's only when I came as a minister, and of course, the minister created. Between 2012, there were very various ministers who tried under the bill, from the view of the Minister of Finance, where Council for Science and Technology was it was domicile so in october 2017 as a minister i managed to have this bill passed by parliament and then in december 2017 the bill was returned by the president for, for consideration of a number of issues about 10 issues we tried to amend them we tried to address uh, the issues but however because of the rigidity within the laws within the rules of procedure of parliament. Like you can only consider the clauses that were set by the president. So you, you stick for debate and you cannot introduce new clauses, you know, unless they were related to what was drawn by the president. So this really curtailed our ability at that time to come out with, a, with a, a bill that would be accepted by the president and also by the other people. Nonetheless, we passed the bill uh, based on our rules of procedure and uh, Hani Rupert took with the president. In July 2019, the president returned the bill. Uh, of course, when we when we passed it in 2018, we also changed the name from biosafety and the biotechnology to be more specific by calling it the National Genetic Engineering Regulatory Bill. Uh, and it was a bill for an act. So this was returned by the president, and we retabled it in October 2019. And basically, the president was right. He was concerned about issue of benefit sharing. Like if you have got a uh, cow and you prove on it, why should it be only the person who has done the final, uh, you know, improvement to get the money without to get the bottles? There was the issue of commingling of GMO materials with non-GMO seeds and materials and the issue of isolation distances. The then also, the, the president wanted to be sure that the law does not also become general to address other aspects of genetic engineering, such as gene editing and of other areas like human cloning and others. Then he also was concerned about the home of genetic engineering, which he thought should be under the office of the president. And I'm happy now that the, the STI will be, by and large, managed under the office of the president. So this one now goes off. Then he, there was also concern that the law did not specifically say poisons and dangerous viruses should not be put, I mean, should not be, should not come into play. And of course, the most contentious clause was of strict liability, that when something happens to human beings or environment, who should be held liable? And he thought, uh, uh, and rightly so, that the companies should be held re- re- uh, liable. And the law had not become specific on that. And then, of course, issues of uh, steridomide and others. So the president returned the bill. However, when the bill was brought to parliament, the speaker uh, did say, we are not going to debate this law, this bill again, which I thought maybe could have been reconsidered. Because I think these were simple things which the president had raised. Uh, we could have actually handled them through the committee and I had a lot of debates with the speaker, with the parliamentary legal, legal uh, uh, affairs uh, uh, department who advised the speaker because I thought they would just refer to the committee and then we we change what the president wanted and which was genuine and we come back and pass the bill. Uh, but the speaker insisted that we should uh, we should go 
uh, according to some law, and of course, uh, vote, put the vote. But for you to have a vote that will then pass the bill, you have to have two sides of all the members of parliament, not simply members of parliament who are present. Now, of course, over the past year or so, uh, we've, we've had that problem of COVID, and the parliament will be uh, split. But even if all of them were there, getting to that is not easy. It would have been easier to, to get it through the other route of making sure we are able to get what we are able to get through the committee. And then we come and vote, and then we say, I have it, uh, like that. But when you put two sides, it, it, the time wasn't enough for us to convince all members of parliament. So as we speak, the, the bill I need to check should have been saved. And uh, then now, it will be due for first reading. And it will be up to the minister and the cabinet. They might decide, OK, maybe to see how to look at the bill again. But uh, so the alternative at that time was either uh, for, for the bill to, to, be, to be withdrawn which, we could, which I couldn't do uh, for retabling uh, or, or put to vote. But we decided, okay, let it lapse and then be, be voted on by the new parliament uh, after Senate debate and also to enable the committee of parliament to look through. So that's as far as, as I'm concerned. Of course, now things could have changed. But it's also important that uh, it is good to know for, for members to know that. Uh, the, the, you know, other countries, Republic of South Africa, Kenya, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Nigeria, uh, Mozambique, Sudan, Eswatini, all those now have law in place. So in, when we are not passing this law, then of course we, we might be having to continue an influx of non-regulated GM products into our Ugandan market, as I've said, when you go to the supermarket, you refine. Now, with our neighboring countries like Kenya and Sudan, and for, for that matter, so, I mean Rwanda, commercializing some of the of the crops, there is a record of farmers sneaking them into Uganda, and with an originated planting materials coming to the country, that's not good. We continue to lose some scientists that have been trained. Very good scientists have left, and this affects Borar. And then, of course, we lose economic employment, industry opportunities. Uganda was very much ahead in most of these crops, especially like cassava uh, and, uh, and, and maize, in terms of research. Even bananas, we have very good bananas there in Kawanda. This is not attacked by, the, by, by this, uh, by this uh, banana bacteria with the disease. And of course, many crops which are affected by cryptic insects, which cannot be handled by conventional breeding methods. And then, of course, now you can see the even the others. So, so in, in short, the bill, uh, I think the, this parliament will be able to handle it. Uh, for sure, there has been some movement because as we see right now, the antique vaccine is basically using GMO technology. The vaccine we are bringing now, this is the, actually one of them I think is a Ugandan who did a PhD in molecular biotechnology in the UK. I think his thesis was one of the principle behind one of these va vaccines on, on COVID. So all this is by technology. And I'm sure that uh, uh, we shall have this law in place. But that law was many props. We certainly also have to have the, the law that we, we respect the National Drug Authority with medicines to make sure they also cater for this. And, and of course, the Environmental Act is very, very strong on benefit sharing. And actually, even can even just using the, the Environmental Act, one can easily handle some of these issues which are being handled, uh, which were to be handled by this law. So I think uh, maybe I can stop here saying, you know, the future should be okay. Uh, in the ministry, we highlighted the issue of biosciences. We had even uh, our plans to have a science and, science and technology parks focusing on biosciences. And we believe, just even when you read the national vision, that now currently we've got uh, an intersectional mixing of, uh, of the, the, the meeting of, of the physical, the digital, the biological, and the chemical. All of them are coming into together. And then you need it by technological tools, nanotechnological tools, to be able to, to handle. And therefore, there's no shortcut. This is the way to go. 
and uh, I wish the, the, the new minister and uh, all the best as this is handled. And I wish all of you students the best of luck, but be confident that uh, what you have taken as biotechnology is what is very, very crucial currently and in the future. Doctor, thank you. Doctor, thank you so much. Maybe before you go, you've done it unquestionably a leader in innovation. It has, it, it, it really had a lot of investment as government, but also as friends and donors into biotech research and, and with the leadership really of the neuroscience. Now, but we've also invested a lot in building a base of human capacity with students and, and, and scientists in, in the face of this uncertainty. Could we speak of a missed opportunity? Uh, you see, time, of course, time is of essence. Legislation is also takes time. You, you can even see how many times the bill on NSSF has been brought back. You have seen bills on sexual offenses and others which have also been around for quite some time. There is a missed opportunity, as I said in my earlier remarks. And uh, But all is not lost. All is not lost. I'm sure very, very soon we, we shall come to a consensus uh, on, on, on the way forward on that bill. But as I said, even without that bill, there is already work and biotechnology continues. Biotechnology is beyond genetic modification, where genetic modification is a very important, uh, uh, you can say, co low, lowest common denominator, LCM, something like that, what we use to use in mathematics, that all the circles, they have some inside the circle. Uh, I think those, I don't remember what we were calling them. So it's lowest so common denominator. Yeah, uh -huh. lowest common multiple, but also multiple. when you have those charts, I mean, when you have those, uh, Venn diagrams or whatever, and there is something in the center, there's like an intersection, you know? So, more and more technology is the intersection, but certainly it's a missed opportunity. We've missed, I think I told you about, we lost Chukundu, we lost many other scientists, but others are coming up. And I believe in a not too distant the future, we shall pass the bill, but passing the bill itself is not enough, even get resources into the, into the, into the country and into the innovation support those researchers in Kawanda, support uh, Makere. There's no doubt about that. I know I, I know you don't have a lot of time, Doctor, but I think before you go, I would like to ask you another question. Speaking of the regulatory framework, the policy and the absence of the law and, and all that, there is a marriage between the regulatory framework and the institutional framework. And during your reign as Minister of, Minister of Science, <laughs> We had the opportunity to appreciate your stewardship in expediting the process, you know, seeing the bill from its first form as the National Biotechnology and Biosafety uh, Act of, of 2012 to now as passed in 2018 as the uh, Genetic Engineering and Regulatory Act. And, and this really, I, we would also not be blind to assume that this was also supported by the establishment of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation as an independent and and of course with your great stewardship do you think the current the current uh, creation and, and, uh, and placement of the ministry of science technology and innovation under the office of the president ministry of, uh, under the ministry of the office of the president does that create a, 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 a does it facilitate expediting the process going forward yeah I, as i said even one of the clauses which the president used to return the bill, he wanted that the, the, the regulatory council or the control of genetic engineering to be in the office of the president. So by pressing this in the office of the president, that is removed. Now it's very clear. But also too, that actually the president himself had, had already point, pointed out that I know those people are opposed to to, to genetic engineering, but I think we must move at the country. And he had said, let us call a caucus. But just at that time when we had called a caucus and agreed on this, that's when Corona broke out in March 2020 last year. So the president is already convinced that we must pass this bill. And as I said, some of the these clauses that he's talking about, they, they are genuine. Somebody can go and handle them. So there is a very, very clear will in the president 
actually also convince the people who are opposed, mainly because of issues of food sovereignty. Food sovereignty. Yeah. So there is right. more education and more consensus building. Uh, yeah. like when you go to support these farmers who take time to grow their 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 what? Their cassava. And when they go to harvest, the cassava all of it is rooted. You know? Or people who go and raise their maize, and within a short time, when wind comes, it puts the, all the plantations down after investment. Or somebody takes time to raise coffee, and the time of harvesting, after about two, three years, the coffee dries up. You know? So there are so many, many instances, many, many, that for sure by technology would have helped. And on the, because now currently you see how many people are suffering with uh, with losing their cattle because of ticks, and you see our colleagues who have died because of COVID. So the, I think pressing uh, the the this responsibility under the office of the president should be in a way actually be more of a catalyst because even for us sometimes when you'd want to consult the president, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the case. But now pressing directly under the presidency and makes it very, very much easier. No cost also money. I think it will also be easier to get the, to get money into the sector, you know? So for me, uh, I, and, uh, and also have the crowd. So I have no no doubt that uh, the, the, the what, the, 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 the pressing of, of, the, of the ministry, now I think it's gonna be a secretariat in the, in the state house, does not in any way diminish the capacity of the country to go forward with the genetic engineering bill, uh, as people might fear. To live on a more optimistic note, uh, Doctor, as I let you go in the next year. No, you know, there is no time for negative energy. Yeah, uh, yes. It, in 2017, in the face of Kola Mewam and that prolonged drought, really, we saw the nation almost come together to support uh, biotechnology, embracement of biotech, and its role in addressing these challenges. Do you see, amid this crisis of COVID-19 and the other prevailing crises in the round, do you see an opportunity for science communicators and advocates and proponents of the technology to leverage and, and, and advocate and engage policymakers on the necessity to expedite the process uh, so we have this act passed in, as soon as possible? They are for sure, COVID presents that opportunity I wouldn't want to call it an opportunity because you know it's not an opportunity, but at least it highlights. And actually, when we were discussing uh, this COVID crisis in March last year, I remember the president saying, "Maybe even these people who have been objecting to the genetic engineering bill, we should tell them just to forget about their issues." He even said we should even drop that issue of requiring isolation distances or consider this issue of isolation distances. Because it's a problem, we are we must use by technology solve this problem of COVID. So there is no way, even in, when we talk about vaccine from tuba, whatever, that is biotechnology. That's modern biotechnology. That's genetic engineering, actually. You know, when people fear to get products, it it it, it what it it, it maize, you know, which is GMO, to beat cassava, which is maize. They actually now get a direct injection into their what into their bodies, which is a product of real serious. Uh, engineering of, 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 of I mean genetic engineering. Yeah. Some of the vaccines are DNAs, some of them are recombinant DNA, and of course, as you, even this messenger RNA one, it also entering a cell, although you don't enter the nucleus. So, but for sure, the, 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 the challenges that are there now, because when you have a challenge, you must look for a solution. You know? So, this challenge of COVID, the challenge of ticks, the challenge of these cryptic insects are like the four armor worm coming and devastating farmers. The challenge of climate. When you expect rain, there's no rain. When you don't expect it, you have a flood. You know? So you must be able to produce plants that are going to be able to adopt this, you know? And uh, all this will force us to, to, to do what? To, to, to pass the bill. Uh, in whatever form that will be agreed upon. What we need, of course, the advocates. I think the communicators have not been very strong. Those who opposed have been very, very strong. And I think heavily funded, actually. Those who are opposed to 
genetic engineering beer, being passed. Well, I think they were well funded. Uh, on our side, I think now that the uh, certainly the, the sector will be under the office of the president. It might be very crucial that the Uganda National Council for Science and Technology uh, plays a big role in, in, in advocacy for this. Uh, your school, the, the universities, uh, because I think there they have been lone voices. There have been Asa Makara here, Prospero there with Dr. Subuga shouting once in a while. Then you have Abdul Roka coming up once in a while. Ah, then uh, maybe the mountain there are That's the truth. Yeah. 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 About, about all this. Then there will be consensus. And then we see those who are opposed. We, we try to also address their concerns. And we listen to each other. We develop consensus and we say for better or worse, we move on rather than having an, an a certain regulatory environment. Doctor, we are now seeing that coming in. Doctor, doctor uh, don't you risk being over optimistic about a possibility of consensus? In your time in this field, do you think consensus is feasible? Yeah, consensus for sure is feasible because even I could, I can even see UK, you know, in Europe there was also no consensus. But I can see UK coming, I think, on board. Consensus is feasible. It's very, very feasible. It's the, because as you can see, the, the, there were just only a few points which were not agreed upon. Just a few. The issue of uh, commingling, of uh, GMO and non GMO. And when you go to USA, you'll find clear the plantation of GMO, and that was the, non the plantation of non GMO. See, so you, it's not, the, the, the points of the departure are not very nice. And then the issue of strict liability. For me, I think those are the major issues that I see we are, we are hindering progress. The others are, are not very difficult to, to accommodate. That's true. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. And I want to commend you for the work you did during the reign of the ministry. And I hope you yeah, will but, remain uh, a friend. Uh, I had an opportunity to be the first cabinet minister of science, technology and innovation in Uganda. And I'm very proud of my record. We are not exhibitionists. We show it, show it. But we did quite a lot for Uganda for this country. And I'm very, very uh, pleased. And we normally say, face your past with no regrets. Handle yeah. your present with confidence. Prepare for the future without fear. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope you can. I, I only wish you could be here longer with us. I don't know how long you have. No problem. Maxwell is very good. Makara is good. We've missed Barbara Zawede. But I'm sure all of those guys are very good. They are even better than me, and they will be able to take on the discussion. Thank you so I'm much. I'm available for the studies when you call when you call me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, interesting. Interesting. I think, uh, Doctor, you have to leave a number of points highlighters for this conversation going forward. And I will straightforward uh, call on uh, Doctor Maxwell. Doctor, you are welcome. I have known you for as well for quite some time during your time at UNCST and, and now uh, at Mo.